Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the studio. This week we have a short excerpt of a longer Patreon exclusive video. So if you want to watch the full video and many more like it, head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash There's a link in the description below. The leg, both legs, differ a lot from how we sculpt the torso because of the nature of what they are and how they are constructed. In the torso, a center line is very useful, as there actually is, a, is an easy center, <laughs> but with legs, there is no easy center. What is center at the top of the thigh is not the center of the calf, so it doesn't really function very well for us. The way we thought while sculpting the torso, thinking of symmetry on either side of the center line, doesn't apply here either. Not only because a center line is not very useful to begin with, but because there is no symmetry on either side of the leg, which again leads back to making a center line less than useful. So instead of considering symmetry in our outer contours on either side while sculpting the leg, I change my thinking and focus on creating contours that help the eye travel up and down the leg. So how do we do that? We do that by offsetting the peaks of form on either side of the leg. Be it side to side or front to back, it, it's the same thing. As an easy example, the peak of the form on the front of the thigh from the side view should be higher up than the peak of the form on the back of the thigh. Same thing applies for the calf. The peak of the form on the back of the calf is higher up than the front from the side view. If you imagine drawing a straight line between these high points, you would get kind of a zigzagging pattern, a zigzagging line up and down the leg. Notice also how the rolls reversed from thigh to calf. On the thigh, we had the front higher than the back, and on the calf, we have the back higher than the front. Another couple of easy examples I can give you are how the ankle bone on the outside of the leg sits lower than the ankle bone on the inside of the leg. And this can be observed easily from the front of the back views. The high point on the inside of the calf sits lower than the high point on the outside of the calf from the front and the back view. The high point of the great trochanter, which is where the femur exits or enters, depending on your persuasion, the pelvis. The great trochanter sits higher than the high point on the inside of the thigh, from the front and the back view. Pay attention closely to the contours of the leg from all the views I'll end up showing you in this video, and you'll notice that almost every high point is offset from the next high point on the other side of the contour. This plays a major role in creating good rhythm and good gesture. By the virtue of having the pelvis and ribcage tilted, this very same thing happens in a somewhat slower, more subtle fashion on the body. If the pelvis tilts, then a high point on one side is going to be further up than the same high point on the other side. If the pelvis doesn't tilt, these two high points are directly across from each other, 
horizontally across from each other. You can be more extreme with it in the legs and it not only serves the purpose of functioning better as a leg, you'll see these patterns again and again on model after model. This is how most legs are going to appear in front of you. So not only will you be sculpting a better leg by doing this, but by being slightly more extreme in the offset of these high points compared to the torso, you will by the nature of these high points being more extreme, force the eye of whoever looks at your work upwards towards the more important element elements of your piece. The body having the same concepts but applied with more subtlety will ensure that the eye rests for longer in these areas. It's very interesting how you can actually manipulate the viewer in this fashion and it becomes much more interesting and much more challenging to balance and, and make work when you begin introducing several figures functioning together in a multifigural composition. This brings me to observation. How I observe the model and sculpture is very important because it's the foundation that allows me to create anything with any semblance of accuracy. We observe model and sculpture on equal terms, in, and in simple terms, that means just observing them from the same view. Which makes a lot of sense, I think, to everyone. If you want to make something look like something else, make sure you observe them the very same way. We have strategies and techniques for this. We used the box and lined it up with our model's pelvis. We made sure the box was square to the base of our sculpture in order to make sure it was easy for us to get back to observing directly from the front, even after adding a lot of muscle and flesh to the pelvic area. Once we begin the portrait, we'll observe directly from the front and the two profiles of the portrait of the head as well. But we won't be using the pelvis as our measure for what is the front of the head. We'll use the head itself for that, which I think makes a lot of sense. So if our model looks off to the right, the front of the face will be off to the right compared to the front of the pelvis. Essentially, we'll observe the face on its own term, as its own thing. Now we're not working on the face today, we are working on the balance leg, but I treat the balance leg pretty much the same way. I find the direction that the knee is aiming and I treat that as my front view. 90 degrees to either side of this front view is my side views and another 90 degrees again brings me to the back view which will be directly behind the knee. My knee is facing pretty much the same direction as the pelvis in this case, but if it wasn't, if it was off to the side just a little, even just by a little, I would simply move myself over until I was facing directly the front of my model's knee and observe from there, turning my sculpture. There's a huge amount of freedom in working this way. If I want my knee to face in a particular place that it does not on my model, I can simply stay facing the direct front of my model's knee and rotate my sculpture. I'll place the front of the knee on my sculpture wherever I please and continue to observe from the front of my model's knee. This knowledge can be extended. You can do the same with the pelvis and the ribcage. You can rotate your sculpture's ribcage in relationship to the pelvis, even if it's not something that your model provides you with. As long as you observe the rib cage itself on equal terms, of course. The balance leg is an accessory as far as creating a structurally sound sculpture goes, which means we can do whatever we want with it without much consequence. If we want the knee facing outwards, we can do that without impacting the overall balance of our figure. 
We might impact the gesture, but we won't make the sculpture look like it's about to fall over. The head and the arms are pretty much the same thing. There is a lot of choice here. If we are capable of observing each element on equal term on its own, that is. As a beginner, however, I wouldn't really act on this. I wouldn't really do this. The difficult part when doing something like this is that you can end up with unconvincing connections between the different parts of the body. If the head turns a lot, the neck is going to have to behave very differently than if the head is barely turned. And if you cannot observe it, you might have a hard time creating a convincing neck. We've all probably seen what a neck that's turned a lot looks like, but it might be more difficult to rotate the knee outwards in a convincing fashion, as the way this looks is a lot more obscure and subtle and not something we're probably as used to seeing as a neck turning. So if you're not careful doing this, you can create some very unconvincing connections and some very unconvincing sculptures. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did and want to learn sculpture from me or just support the channel, check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critique some people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. And right now there is exclusive sculpting content on my Patreon. The first series we have embarked on is the Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture. I am super excited to finally be creating exclusive content for Patreon and I hope you will be too and will take a look. The link to my Patreon is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative and I hope to see you in the next one.